California in crisis. We are facing an extreme drought, and now is the time to prepare for a problem that could last for years. For the next half hour, we're going to be talking about our dry conditions and what we need to do to prepare. And this comes as we deal with the heat wave this week. All right, so let's start by checking in with KCO9 meteorologist Alex Bisson, who's also keeping an eye on that brush fire burning along the 73 in Orange County. So, yeah. Alex, what are conditions like out there? Yeah, hi, Chris and Amy. So, we've been talking about the elevated fire weather conditions over the past few days, and it's here. We're talking about heat, record breaking heat in some areas of Southern California. It's bone dry, so fuels unseasonably dry. And we are talking about gusty winds, especially as we head into the afternoon hours. So we have winds, double digit wind speeds for a lot of areas of Southern California inland. Orange County is included in that. Uh, and we also normally see the winds kick up around this time. Temperature wise, here's what we're working with along the coast. It's actually pretty nice. We've got 70s, but inland, that is where we are feeling the brunt of the heat. Triple digit readings this afternoon in areas like the Antelope Valley, as well as Victorville at 111 this afternoon, 80s and 90s in the valley. So actually, when we compare temperatures to what we felt this time yesterday, it's actually cooler west of the mountains, but still on the warm side. We are well above average, so record heat. Here's what we broke today. Lancaster came in at 113, 112 in Palmdale and Sandburg at 101. All right, Alex, thank you so much for that. So now we're joined by Dr. Tapio Schneider. He's a professor of environmental sciences and engineering at Caltech, also a senior research scientist at JPL. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day, Dr. Schneider. Um, let's begin with just how bad is the drought that we are facing? You know, we've heard for years about droughts, but will this be worse than the one that ended back in 2017? Difficult to say yet. So the drought that ended in 2017 began in 2012. It was severe, but it had a slower start than the current drought. So one year into the drought that started in 2012, about the quarter of the state was in severe drought conditions. And now we are one year into a new drought, and it's already 95% of the state in severe drought conditions. So we are off to a bad start, but it's hard to say what the future will bring. Next year may well be a rainy season, and it may well get better. It may get worse. Um, difficult to say at this point. Yeah, we can only hope for sure. But when we go through heat waves like the one we're going through now, how much can one week of high temperatures just worsen the drought? High temperature means there's more evaporation from the soils, from the reservoirs and the like. However, one week in itself does not make a huge dent in long term water availability, for example. If it were just one week, that's very hot. Well, that has happened before. That, that can be tolerated. It in itself is not a huge problem for water resources. But the problem arises is that generally temperatures have been increasing over the past few decades. And now we have a week of extreme heat, but even the more regular warm part of the year is warmer than it used to be. And that does exacerbate droughts. Well, Doctor, do you feel that California has really properly prepared for this drought? California learned important lessons from the 2012 through 2017 drought. The Department of Water Resources was very proactive, implemented water conservation measures, water use efficiency measures, man water management, developed contingency plans for uh, low reservoirs. And I feel California is relatively well prepared. Um, that does not mean it will be easy. There will be water use restrictions. Some are already in place in parts of the state, and there will be more restrictions in other parts of the state coming, I'm sure. Um, but there was relatively proactive planning on the side of the government that definitely has helped. And Dr. Schneider, water conservation is so important as we head into this drought. What do you think everyday people like us should do to prepare to conserve water? You can limit water use in your day-to-day -day life, limit watering lawns, um, limit washing cars and the like. Of course, the main use of water in California is agriculture and there's less flexibility in limiting that in the drought all the more the agricultural agriculture needs the water and it's, it's difficult to limit that. Hmm. And climate change is something we've been talking about for quite some time. Is there any new technology coming down the pipeline that could help us combat climate change? 
I think eventually the technology that will bring climate change under control is simply energy available from renewables. The cost of solar power has decreased by somewhere between a factor of five to eight over the last decade, which is really astonishing. By now installing new solar power plants, it's cheaper to install new solar power plants in many parts of the world, including parts of California, than building new fossil fuel burning power plants. So our future is electric. Eventually, there will be electricity production from renewables will be the primary way in which we generate energy. Once we reach that point, climate change will become under control. The challenge is that climate is changing as we are speaking and we need to get to that point <coughs> fast. The climate change that has already happened and that will happen in the coming years and decades will be with us for centuries, most likely. So it's a real challenge to manage that transition to a more sustainable future rapidly. Well, some great insight for sure. And thank you so much, Dr. Schneider, for sharing your expertise with us today. Have a great one thank and, and we'll see me. you next time. Well, the drought is already taking a toll on people living in one California wine country. They've been ordered to stop mm -hmm. all outdoor watering systems. Yeah, the drastic measures are in Healdsburg. Lawns are already turning brown. They're not even allowed to use drip systems. Residents are ordered to cut water usage by 40%. Now, they're also limited to 74 gallons a day. It's all because the city gets its water exclusively from Lake Mendocino, which is at 39% capacity. Now, the boat ramp is far from the water's edge. Look at that. It's a big drop real quick. It's, it looks like a puddle, and that's where we get our water. We're way past brown lawns. Yeah, we're trying to think long term in terms of what if this goes on for two years? How do we cope with this situation? And one restaurant using water from melted ice and champagne buckets to water plants. Mm. Another neighborhood association, they hired a truck to bring in reclaimed water at a cost of $5,000 a month. Wow. Nevada and Utah are also concerned about extreme drought. Utah is already under a drought emergency. The Great Salt Lake is expected to reach its lowest point in modern history this year. As Lake Mead and Lake Powell dry up, Washington County has a 15-year plan to bring Colorado River water directly to them through a pipeline. Now, it says it will only take what it's allocated. Critics say that's like another straw drinking from a tap. Well, more now on California's extreme drought. It has a lot of us thinking about how to keep our lawns and gardens alive while conserving precious water. We're joined now by our friend Nick Federoff, Things Green, gardening expert and radio and TV host. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for the invitation. How's everybody doing? Oh, we're doing amazing, especially now with you here. So. <laughs> Let's start with watering. When is the best time of day for us to water? The best time to water is at 5 a.m. So right when you get up, now if you're gonna be taking a shower between five and six, see most sprinkler systems are usually designed to work anywhere between a half hour, 45 minutes, as, most, as much as an hour, depending on how big your property is. So you, wanna, you want to, to be about at five o'clock in the morning. This allows the water to percolate through. It can get into that soil strata and it can really soak in well before the heat starts pounding on it. But Nick, how much and how often should we be watering? You know, that's really the key question. So I could tell you right off the bat, most people are watering this much right here. But if you were to cut down to this much, in other words, half of what you're doing right now, you're gonna be in really good shape. There's a reason, well, let's put it this way, when people call me on the radio, they will always ask me, Nick, am I watering my lawn too much? You wanna know something? If they're asking that, they are. Mm -hmm. And whenever I go on landscape consultations, I can't tell you how many lawns I walk on and it's squishy and they're watering too much. So what you gotta do is you gotta become very friendly with your time clock, with your irrigation time clock, just to make sure that you've got the right kind of settings. But those settings are really important to understand. What we have to do is that we have to, of course, we're, whenever we talk about drought, we think about the lawn. That's the first thing, because that's the, usually the biggest area. Even during a the drought, there's no reason why you can't have a green lawn. Hmm. When you reduce that amount of water 
as we just talked about, at least half, what will happen is that those roots actually get stronger. Everything gets strong and it's going to turn green. There's so many pale green lawns out there right now. If you cut it down, it'll be all right. You want about one and a quarter to one and a half inches of, of precipitation, irrigation water on your lawn. So what you do is that you put little cups out all in your lawn and you just spread them all out of the, all, all over the place. And then you turn your water on until it fills and you, and you time it out. And you get, okay, how long did it take to fill up that, that, uh, uh, that cup to an inch and a quarter? And then once you have that, figured out, then what you do is you, you divide that by say three, and then on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, you water that amount of money because you've divided it, I mean, uh, uh, not money, um, uh, water, and then that'll keep your lawn nice and green. <coughs> Excuse me, Nick, I'm battling a little bit of a cold here. You took us at the wrong time. Hey, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> there's a, a big movement towards California native plants. Um, a lot of people are going that route. So should we be making that switch now? No, not at all. Here we have a, a California native plant right over in this little corner right here. And here's the problem with California natives that, that people who are passionate about California natives don't tell anybody. California natives, many of them, not all, many of them go uh, dormant during the summertime. That means you're going to lose leaves. It's going to be a dead looking plant. A California native will take as much, if not more, water in its first year to get established. So the thing of it is, is that you don't want to put any California natives in right now fall, winter, spring, that's a good time. Right now, no, because they are gonna go dormant and you're gonna think, oh no, it's dying. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna put more water. And we already discovered we're watering our plants too much. Which is great advice, Nick. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. So many important things we need to know about keeping our lawns green and conserving water. And you made it fun. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks. All Thank right, let's you. talk a little bit about weather. We are in the middle of a heat wave. Alex Bishon joins us now. Alex, we've got a few more days of hot weather, right? We do. Unfortunately, if you don't like the heat, yes, we've got another few days of hot weather. Today, we even broke some heat records. Lancaster, Palmdale, Sandburg all broke heat records, all in the triple digits this afternoon. Uh, one thing that we have that's going to be a little bit different as we head into tomorrow, it's still going to be very hot, but we are tracking some moisture coming in from the south, and that could actually trigger some thunderstorms up in the mountains as well as the high desert community. So that is something we will watch as that could produce some dry lightning. We've been talking about elevated fire weather conditions the past few days. So again, that's something we're going to keep our eye on. Let's take you out toward the coast. Santa Monica currently a mostly clear sky. We've got temperatures in the lower 70s. So yes, it's comfortable at the beach. But then once we head inland to San Bernardino, we've got temperatures in the triple digits. So we are talking 102 this afternoon. So yes, our inland areas will continue to feel the brunt of the heat. We have excessive heat warnings as well as heat advisories with us at least through the end of the week. And then we finally start to feel some cooler numbers that enters the picture as we head into next week. So here is the extended forecast tomorrow. We have temperatures in the upper 80s for LA and Orange County Metro triple digits in the valley we will knock it down to the 90s as we head into your Friday for the Valley locations, but we will hang on to triple digit temperatures through the weekend for most inland spots and then we'll cool it down. You could say to the 90s as we head into next week. Back to you, Alex. Thank you.